So we're still here in Los we're Angeles. Here. We're here to stay until God tells us to go elsewhere. Yep. Uh, so new house, new beginnings, new home, but same, Love it. same city. Yeah, we're going to take you guys along on this little adventure. We have just begun, embarked upon. There's a, there's a lot that needs to be done around this house. And so we'll show you some of that in upcoming vlogs. So this house is a beautiful home. It's live like ready to be moved into, but there's some projects we can do. Yeah. And so that's, you love that because you yeah. love the. Hi friends, it's Katie from Without a Crystal Ball. Welcome back to my channel. It's Friday, July 19th, 2024, and I hope everyone's having a wonderful day. Earlier this week, we talked about a move that Ginger and Jeremy Fallot were making and discussing how they were kind of vague. I mean, you all in my comments were like, well, they said they were moving, but they didn't really say why they moved, and they didn't give a lot of explanation about where they moved, but just that they were staying in Los Angeles. And then they referenced that they were in this house that had a bunch of work that needed to be done and that Ginger was going to take them on this journey. And Jeremy kept asking about homesteading, which they're not going to do. So naturally, this sparked intrigue about people about why would the couple who had just purchased a home less than two years ago already be selling their home and moving seemingly into the same area, right? And still staying in Los Angeles with the mar housing market being the way it is and interest rates being how high they are right now and the increase in property value kind of dissipating right now because of the rates that have gone up, why would they want to sell so quickly with having such little equity in the home at this point? Well, this is a good question. Now, I can't tell you the specifics about why their decision was made to move, but I can tell you that the home that they moved into is actually owned by Jeremy's school, the Master's Seminary or Master's University. And the home was purchased back in 2022 as a part of a group of homes that they purchased in the canyon near where this church is located. And it was earmarked for student housing. In fact, the school actually put out a press release about these purchases to let people know about the new opportunities for housing because apparently their enrollment had increased and they needed other campus housing to put students in. And the homes that they purchased under the trust, the John MacArthur Trust and the Masters University Trust were earmarked for upperclassmen juniors and seniors in their bachelor's degree programs, not graduate students. So it's interesting. So let me share with you what, let me share with you what their press release stated. It says the Masters University recently purchased nine properties in Plair Plaricita Canyon, expanding its housing capacity to meet record setting enrollment growth the past two years. The previous two fall semesters we have seen TMU welcomed new students at levels never seen before on its Newhall, California campus. This has created a need for additional housing even before another large class of students is expected to arrive in fall of 2022. Something had to be done. So TMU partnered with the MacArthur Trust to purchase nine homes, seven of which are adjacent to the campus, another two within walking distance. Dubbed co campus cottages, the units will house upperclassmen beginning in fall of 2022. Each campus cottage will be named after a Christian missionary or influential figure. More importantly, the structures will help TMU meet a growing demand for an education committed to Christ and scripture. In fall 2021, a record 415 new students enrolled at TMU, and later that semester, a study conducted by the Chronicle of Higher Education showed that TMU saw the highest rate of growth in California and the 18th best national wide between 19, 2019 and 2020. So these homes added roughly 12 acres to the campus and they encompassed, which previously had 95 acres. And that was what 
it was set to do. They were supposed to be used as homes for upperclassmen. And so when you actually go to the master's university, it describes what these homes are and they are supposed to be communal living with homes that have names of Calvin, Spurgeon, Bunyan, Hudson, Taylor, Sprawl, Edwards, and Tyndale. And they have four to six bedrooms, all the necessary amenities for comfortable living. They have resident assistants, wellness ambassadors. They have a variety of exciting events. So they were supposed to be, they're just regular houses, by the way. They're not actually dormitories but they were like owned by the by the school and students could actually pay to live there but they were be they would be living with people that they didn't necessarily know okay so jeremy and ginger moved into one of the homes that is with either it's on the campus or within walking distance and the house that they're in was purchased in 2022 by the church so the house that they're currently in is 3,000, around 3,000 square, square feet. It's got like four bedrooms. It was built in 1980. It needs some renovations, which is a for sure. But it begs the question of if the housing is supposed to be used for students that are upperclassmen, do, are the needs of the school with the housing not needed anymore? Or are Jeremy and Ginger occupying one of the homes in lieu of other people? I would think if they had a demand, Jeremy and Ginger wouldn't be allowed to occupy a home. And it doesn't seem like the way that this is being set up, that they're going to be sharing their home with anyone else. At least, I hope not. According to the tuition and the housing fee schedule at Masters University, these cottages run $4,800 for a semester and they have other requirements that they have to meet and stay within the guidelines, the student like modesty guidelines for clothing. They have to follow the honor code and the different behavioral detail that's required by the, the school and the church, which I highly doubt they're not going to be able to keep within or maintain. It's just the choice to move back into campus housing is interesting being that they had just owned their own home, right? So it kind of begs the question of, were they unable to keep up with the mortgage payment with the house that they had purchased? And Jeremy gave a deposition back in 2021, and it was related to the girls, the the daughters, the Duggar daughter lawsuit against the city and the police department for the release of records. They claimed that they had been you know, economically damaged and it was illegal. The lawsuit eventually is dismissed, but in his deposition, he actually revealed that he wasn't getting paid as a pastor at the church. So he's a college, like a, he's the youth pastor for their youth program, but he's not paid. It's a volunteer position. And then he also makes a small amount of money for research and research assistant. And he said that she was making the most money for the family. So it said, so for the most of our marriage, the income was split probably 50, 50. We weren't making a lot at all. I was being paid as a pastor and then we would get income from the show, but it wasn't consistent since moving to California, because I've taken on a different role with, you know, where I'm not pastoring full time an assistant job. Isn't like, you know, great pay or whatever. Ginger has taken more prerogative to do some of those paid partnerships, and I'm not certain, but I think that's where the majority would come from. I think the show money was probably has probably stayed relatively the same. And then he said that at the time, now if you remember a couple weeks ago, they said that they never made money an issue on the show. I'm just putting that out there, and that they didn't care about it. But I don't know that that was necessarily true. So they asked what they were making per show, and he says, yeah, it's not a lot. I remember estimating it a few years ago that it was the same as an employer at McDonald's, but it's not a lot, maybe two to 3,000, something like that per episode. And there's not a ton of episodes. So yeah, I would have to ballpark, you know, on the, on that one. It's two to 3,000 for each of you, or is it combined? No, I think I would possibly say combined. It might have been like 1,500 each per episode, something like that. So a couple of weeks ago on Matt and Abby's podcast, they said they never made money an issue. But then here in a deposition, a sworn deposition, he said that they were getting paid not a lot, 1500 per episode per person, 300, 3000 per episode. And I don't know how many seasons this was 
arranged. This could have been very well what they were given after they, after everything happened with Jill and she wanted to get paid. But they made it clear that they never made money an issue and they didn't ask for money, but they got paid. So it's not a lot, but they got paid. So he does say like, listen, we do make money. And he estimated in the same deposition that they were making anywhere from a hundred to two hundred thousand dollars a year but the most of that money was coming from ginger from ginger writing books and from ginger taking brand deals and posting on social media so when they bought their house she had released the book that she wrote about leaving the iblp and why the teachings were wrong and she put down one hundred and seventy thousand dollars on the house that they purchased but they signed a $664,000 loan, according to property records. And in her podcast, again, with Matt and Abby, they talked about how, you know, getting that mortgage was a really big issue, especially because they grew up believing that they should never have mortgages. Ginger and Jeremy both made comments about high, how high the taxes are in the state of California. And I was assuming, I mean, I know that there's taxes on all things, but if you're a property owner, you're dealing with property taxes. So if she purchased a home and it had a $664,000 mortgage, let's just say that their loan, that at that time, the average interest rate was 7%. But let's just say they had a 6.5% interest rate. If you put that into a mortgage calculator, it would estimate that before taxes and insurance, their payment alone would be like $4,200 a month. Then you add in taxes, which according to the property records were $6,500 a year, which is $541 a month. And then you add in homeowner's insurance. Her payment monthly to her mortgage company was probably anywhere from five dollars to $6,000 a month. Now, if your husband isn't working full time because he's in graduate school and he's only a research assistant and has a volunteer position as a pastor that the payment of that come falls on to ginger so she after she wrote the book did a bunch of podcast interviews she did a lot of promotions for it she still is promoting it she sometimes will post to her social media sometimes she would post onto her youtube channel but it, I'm guessing because she wasn't consistently doing things on social media that their income was sporadic. I'm also guessing that the money that they put down on the house was likely money she made off the book. So they put the money that they make into the book onto into this property, but then they're selling it less than two years later and they're selling it for 899000 when they only purchased it for 830000 and I know it sounds like that's at least they made something, but when you take out realtor fees, taxes, and title, come back out with just the money that they put down to satisfy the mortgage payoff. So they at least won't lose money that they put into the house, but it sounds like keeping up with that payment was probably not feasible with the unstable income or inconsistent income that she was bringing in every single month, which explains why now they're back on their podcast and why they're back to making more social media content is because they need money. She also has another book coming out next year called People Pleaser. You know, I have nothing against women working and hell, I am the full-time worker. My husband stays at home. We didn't always have that arrangement, but one of us has to stay home because of my son and he, because of my son, that's all I'll say. And so my husband is the one that stays at home now. So I understand that in terms of who provides income for a, a family, it, it's irrelevant because you're a family. The hypocrisy here though, is that Jeremy ascribes to a belief system that says that women are supposed to stay at home, they're not supposed to work, and the man is supposed to be the provider. And he's admitted in a deposition that for the majority of their marriage, they both weren't making very much and they were coming into this relationship 50-50. And he's never been able to 100% support his wife. But that belief system calls men to be the provider and the women to be stay-at-home moms. And John MacArthur wants women not to work. He would prefer it. But Jeremy has his wife working. 
So it's just this weird like dynamic they're in right now. I understand graduate students don't make a lot of money, but Jeremy also has family. So, you know, you have to decide is your dream of being this big time pastor for John MacArthur worth it? And then you're relying on your wife and your wife's fame to make money. It just, a lot of that feels kind of exploitative of what her dad did to her. Maybe someday she'll see it, maybe not. But th that's the story. It sounds like a lot of it comes down to money. I can't say for sure, but it seems like that. And when you're talking about $4,800 per semester versus a five to 6,000 payment a month, of course it makes more sense to move back into campus housing, but it's not a long-term solution. And it's not a house that they're ever gonna be able to own themselves because it's owned by the school. So what are your thoughts about all of that? Let me know some comments. Let me know by leaving a comment in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed and click on the bell so you never miss a video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye everyone.